Ladies and gentlemen, this is about 40 minutes ago. Uh, CNN, in a call Monday night, Acting Attorney General Monty Wilkinson asked Delaware U.S. Attorney David Weiss to remain in office where he is overseeing the tax probe of President Biden's son. John Durham appointed as special counsel by former Attorney General William Barr to reinvestigate the origins of the Trump-Russia probe will also continue his work. So he, the, the, the special counsel, to Durham probe, special counsel. I've been telling people this, and I don't pe- think, you know, I don't think people understand. This is a special counsel like uh, Robert Mueller's special counsel. Remember Mueller time. Remember how excited they were that Mueller was going to find a direct link between Trump and Facebook ads and Putin, and they didn't, but they spent two years investigating? Well, this is the same type of special counsel. However, okay, we'll also continue his work, but he's expected to resign as U.S. attorney in Connecticut, the justice official said. So the resignation request is expected to apply to 56 Senate-confirmed U.S. Attorney, U.S. attorneys appointed by Trump. So every administration does this. It's not that big of a deal. If you hear that John Durham is, not, is, is resigning, that's not true. A special counsel continues. So this is a CNN article. There was a Washington Examiner article, Justice Department, to ask dozens of Trump-appointed U.S. attorneys to resign. And it talks about also Durham continues his... Uh, special counsel work. U.S. Attorney John Durham, who is conducting a criminal investigation into the Russia inquiry, is expected to resign. However, he was appointed special counsel in the final months of the Trump administration and will continue his work even after leaving his post as a top federal prosecutor in Connecticut, Justice Department officials said. Okay. Hit subscribe to this channel right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're, on, we're back on our way to 200,000 subs. To my new Patreons, thank you so very, very much. If you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon is below. Uh, your support is greatly, greatly appreciated. Hit subscribe. Go to hagoodman.com. You can read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, The Daily Caller, other publications, and you can see my debates. Lady, and I'm also working on something awesome that you will love. Ladies and gentlemen... I'm going to spend the next 10 or 15 minutes or so explaining to you exactly why there are going to be some people in the comments section saying, oh, well, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen with the tax probe um, of Caligula. Nothing's going to happen with Durham. Nobody, there's no justice. There's the du- there's a double standard. They get away with everything. We don't have a country. Um... You know, just, I, there's, there's just this defeatist mentality. But I understand why. I'm also skeptical. I'm also cynical. They didn't, James Comey obviously covered up Clinton, like numerous crimes associated with servers outside of the United States government. If you, if you look at that, no matter like where you are in the political spectrum, whether you're far left or conservative, it doesn't matter. If you look at a Secretary of State running private servers that just happens to have a foundation that accepts hundreds of millions of dollars from everyone on the planet, and you say, gosh, it's no no big deal at all. It's not a big deal at all. And those people get beneficial treatment. And you say, ah, it's not a big deal. It's, it's it's, it's, It's nothing compared to what happened with Trump's administration. No, that's infinitely worse than anything they accuse Trump of. But again, there is a double standard. You have top secret intelligence on servers outside of the United States government, special access program intelligence, beyond top secret. You don't know how it got, we don't know how it got there. We don't know how it was able to be transferred or migrated or uh, removed from secure locations within United States networks onto a server run by Clinton and her team. Nobody knows how that happened. Apparently, nobody cares. <laughs> so, so, but the point is, why don't people care? Why is there a double standard of justice? When, there, when it's Trump, they can literally purchase a dossier and, like, just 
a bunch of gossip and nonsense, like fabricated stuff, oh, things that I enjoy in my spare time. Why is it that a dossier can be used against Trump, baseless claims and allegations, but any allegation Trump's ma- Trump makes must be, it must have already been investigated within a day or two, and if it's baseless, nobody can investigate. Or if there's no direct evidence, nobody can investigate. There's no, it just, oh my God, how dare you, it's a post-truth moment. The reason is not because of the Democratic Party, it's not because of media. And I talk about media and the Democratic Party, and I talk about this, this, this double standard of just logic, not just, so they use, the logic they utilized, the reason, it will, the vantage point they utilize against Trump the accusations they level against him are not, they don't use the same mentality against themselves. If it's Tara Reid and Biden, gosh, you know, you have to vet the uh, allegation. If it's any accusation against Trump or Kavanaugh, for example, you believe no matter what. Democrats have no moral compass. Their moral compass spins like a spinning top. They just, um, they don't kneel. They want to praise Colin Kaepernick, but you better believe Pelosi and Schumer and all the wonderful liberals who go to uh, football games and, and, um, um, you know, baseball games, whatever. Those liberals voting for Biden, they're not going to kneel in the stadium. So the, the hypocrisy, the duplicity and the disingenuous, like even President Trump, like he shouldn't. And I'm going to keep saying it because we have to learn. President Trump has to learn. He accomplished great things. Abraham Accords, uh, the beginning of peace between North and South Korea. Lots of great, amazing, paradigm-changing things, but there were missteps. He should never have insulted NFL athletes or LeBron James. Why? What good did it do? It did nothing good. Nothing good. There needed to be a discourse, debate, discussion. Now, I'm going to get to my point, though. The reason that they're able to investigate Trump whenever they want to. And you see, like, Liz Cheney is is actually helping lead or or wants an investigation of Trump uh, and and what happened in D.C., the tragedy that took place. They're not going to find anything. Trump wasn't a part of anything, and he didn't instruct anyone, nor nor did he know that they were going to do what they did. He was completely blindsided by it. Uh, But anyway, and he's protected under the First Amendment and he'll be acquitted. The reason, ladies and gentlemen, seven minutes in, if you lasted this long, is the Republican Party. That is the reason that you and I are skeptical or cynical right now of anyone being indicted. Because I I, I actually think the special counsel and John Durham, I'm still hoping that there's something... I still think that there's a good chance because he's already put away FBI officials. Durham. Durham, the Durham. There's an FBI official in prison now from Boston that John Durham put in prison. John Durham is known as somebody who goes after legally and politically um, crooked individuals. But the Republican Party allows this to take place. Until we're gonna we're gonna unfortunately have to deal with this for the next two years, or beyond if the Republicans don't change. The GOP is is run essentially by President Trump now, or he's taken over the the Republican Party. Okay, he's taken over the. There are more Trump Republicans now than there are uh, never Trumpers or establishment types. Rhinos. The problem, however, the problem is that you have Mitt Romney, Mittens, you have Ben Sass, you have Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, Liz Cheney, uh, Justin Amash was one before he left the Republican Party. You have these people in the Republican Party giving this olive branch to the Democratic Party and media, saying, oh, you know, we don't like Trump, and Trump is this and that. It was all public relations. They don't like his tweets. They try to pretend that they don't like him, that he's a bad human being. The twi- Thank God Trump was banned off of Twitter. 
That was a good thing for President Trump. A horrible thing for Twitter. Really bad for the Democratic Party, by the way. Okay. But all of President Trump's accomplishments were overshadowed by his tweets. In, in Because in our reality today, or our, our political world, there's a cyber reality. Democrats, many morally superior, apoplectic, seething, fuming, fanatical, zealot, zealots who are happen to oftentimes be liberal, um, liberal Democrats, they live in cyberspace. Perception is reality to them. There is The, the only re- reality they know is a retweet and whatever they can cloak or wrap in this in this cloak of outrage. That's it. The emotion within cyberspace is, is what runs their political party. That's it. It's like Tron for apoplectic liberals. But the Republicans are the reason, ladies and gentlemen, that there's a double standard. If you don't have an opposition political party, how on earth can you hold the Democratic Party accountable? How on earth can you hold the FBI and media accountable? You don't have... Everyone in, in D.C. knows that at the end of the day, Mittens Romney and Ben Sass and Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski, they'll just say, yeah, you know what, we don't like Trump. That's going to change, by the way, with the House. The House in 2022 is going to be... Um, the Trump Republican wave is going to take that over. You're not going to have Paul Ryan investigating Trump. You're not going to have Jeff Sessions. Okay, just to let you know, I have no... Okay, the Q message board nonsense, was, I told everyone two years ago, was dangerous. Do you want to know something interesting? Why aren't Democrats... As I, I told everyone, is the most absurd nonsense in the world that was dangerous and would cause just havoc and just the most negative things, and I've been proven right, unfortunately. But I said that two years ago. Why aren't Democrats? Why isn't the FBI finding out who started the whole thing? All you see now is articles, QAnon, QAnon, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's It's the most absurd message board hoax that deceived too many people. They're not finding out who started the whole thing or who, who writes the, uh, the lame messages. Why not? I don't know why not. I, I, I don't know why they don't. Very likely, I'm not saying certainly, almost certainly, Democratic operatives started the whole thing. Or people that wanted you to believe that Sessions was a good person, that he would help Trump. Jeff Sessions was infinitely worse politically than Pelosi or Schumer. It starts with the Republican Party. The Republicans do not want Trump, but they want to derive every benefit from him. That's going to end exactly. That's going to end eventually. If Trump just tones down, like, well, he's not speaking now. He's relaxing. Thank God. <clears throat> he can he can utilize Twitter or social media or whatever as a bulldozer or a. You, you watch. Maybe in a couple months they'll have him back on Twitter because Democrats will realize, oh my God, we don't have Trump. We don't have Trump anymore. We have to govern. They're already governing horribly. The left, by the way, is crumbling off, like breaking off the Democratic Party. They're like, oh, we're not going to get Medicare for all. We're not going to get a Green New Deal legislation. We're not going to get universal basic income. It's all incremental change. They want universal basic income. They don't want shutting down. Well, they're okay with shutting down economies and getting the stimulus checks, but they want the stimulus checks every month forever, the left. So, so, but that's the policy they want. They're not going to get that from the Democratic Party. These are Green Party or People's Party policies. These are Democratic Socialist of America policies. They're not Democratic Party policies. I remember when I was, I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post, the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. I remember one person, many people telling me, why don't you just start your own political party? Why don't you start, this is, why don't you just leave the Democratic Party? Why don't you just leave the Democratic Party? And I, in my head, in my, in my, like, in my head, stuck. And the real cult is on the left. It's not. It's not president. It's not supporting President Trump. The real cult. So I was stuck in that world. It was really a cult. Unfortunately, it was really scary. Actually, when I look at it, think about it. But I said, no. This is the Democratic Party's true value system. 
This is what they truly believe, what Bernie Sanders believes. Then I realized very quickly that they, they wanted to sue Trump. They sued, The day I became a supporter of President Trump is the day they sued Trump, Russia, WikiLeaks, the Tooth Fairy, uh, the Loch Ness Monster, and then they sued Santa Claus. Why? Because uh, they definitely, totally um, had a peaceful transition of power in 2015. Or, it's, yeah, 2016. Not, not, not. Okay, they spent four years sowing distrust in government, our institutions. And they were allowed to do so with Republicans. They blamed Russia and Facebook ads. They called Trump illegitimate. Hollywood every single day. And media, like, one thing Trump has to do is he has to get, there have to be journalists at least open to his policies or at least open to giving Trump a chance or Trump Republicans a chance or objective or maybe even on their side. Like, they Democrats control the media narrative. Now, they have, like... <clears throat> Either whether it's the New York Post or the Wall Street Journal, I don't know if the, I don't know how you would do it, but you have to do exactly what Democrats did with media. There, there's a virtual monopoly of political thought that's that's left leaning. In the New York Times, the Washington Post, I know people who never really knew much about politics and never cared, and suddenly because of Trump, these are life these are liberals, liberal Democrats. They read the New York Times, they think they're. Educated and informed, and oh my god, they spew, it's just like, whatever CNN and MSNBC says, they spew it and they yell about it, and it's like, you're missing, well, did you read the article, Orphaned by Deportation? It wasn't Trump's policy, right? Well, yeah, that was Trump's policy. That that separated families. Orphaned by, de like, uh, La Raza called Trump, uh, President Obama the deporter-in-chief, Okay. He deported more human beings than any other president ever in, in caused the Libya to become a failed state. We can go on forever. Drank Flint water. Did nothing when Standing Rock, when, when Native Americans were brutalized as Standing Rock. You could go look at President Obama's uh, tenure. It's filled with moments that Trump would never be, never like get away with. They looked at Trump with a microscope. He allowed them to do so, but they were able to do so because of Republicans. He allowed them to do so because of his tweets. The tweets were the worst thing ever. They, they, here, you don't always take a sledgehammer. You don't always take a bulldozer. You don't always go for the knockout punch. You don't always, uh, you know, get the howitzer out. You don't always try to hit a home run. You have to tone it down sometimes, and especially... They, wait, there was a, that's a whole other issue. The Republicans allow this to take place. They won't, in, in 2022, you'll see a different Republican Party. This is not always going to, like, this moment, Democrats have their moment in the sun now, or they're running up the score. They lost, and people forget, even, even I forget. I know that you've forgotten also, many, like, almost certainly. President Trump did win in 2016. He was president the past four years. That what that is the pinnacle of politics. That's like the mountaintop of po like political achievement. It's a pretty amazing thing. They were scorned and apoplectic. They 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 think that they were going up against the 1930s and 1940s Germans. Do you understand the mentality? They have no argument. They have zero argument. So their minds were warped, and what happened was they convinced themselves. The moment he won, this is, it started with rhetoric. All the horrible, you know, everything, you know, everything, the most horrendous acts in human history started with words. So therefore, that means that Trump is the worst despot and tyrant. And it got them, it got, by the way, don't ever debate this kind of apoplectic person. But, but I don't know if you've ever noticed this. If you do debate them, you'll actually tell them things and they won't even listen. That you'll actually give them rebuttals, offer them rebuttals to their arguments with facts and reason and logic, and they won't listen, and I'll just go ahead and keep yelling. It's like, it's like children of the corn, like, they go into, like, this zombie, like, daze. But 
So don't do it. But finally, 19 minutes in, I'll repeat myself about 50, for the 50th time. The Republicans allow this to take place. Don't say, oh my God, it's a it's a country. It's, a, it's over. It's over. There's nothing to look forward to anymore. It's a double standard. And they're going to get away with everything. And it never happened. And nothing, nobody will ever get indicted. <laughs> the Republicans let it happen. The Democrats speak with one voice. One voice. And CNN and MSNBC, do you know how many left-leaning channels that call themselves either progressive or kind of just acknowledge they're liberal are just basically, and the $20 million venture capital people is an example of this, they're subsidiaries of thought, subsidiaries of CNN and MSNBC. You're going to see the same thing repackaged. There's no... It's a gigantic scam and racket where they're either open to Medicare for All or advocating it, but at the end of the day, they'll never implement it. And it's the same, like CNN, it's the New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, MSNBC, your favorite pundit on the left who has a channel or a presence on Twitter. And the thing that binds them all is Trump worked with Russia, Trump is a racist, Trump uh, is a despot, and you better not ask for Medicare for All now because uh, we, we, we can't list the reason why. In the future, we can. And, oh my God, the Democrats, the Democratic Party is the only source of power and influence we have. That's what binds the entire left. And when people say, oh, that person's going to become H.A. Goodman. Yeah, probably. Probably people will be people will will either support President Trump or be okay with President Trump because they know the real political adversary is the Democratic Party. It's not if you have like a functioning brain cell, you realize the whole thing's a racket and scam. At least Trump gives you the Abraham Accords, give you gives you a roadmap towards peace between North and South Korea, gives you the tax cuts, gives you if you're on the if conservative, gives you three Supreme Court justices if you're conservative. I mean, you got things with Trump. You got things for your vote. Reversed, opposed the uh, Lincoln Project people, which is what I voted for. One of the things, okay, he signed prison reform legislation. He allocated more funding to historically black colleges and universities than any president ever. You got something for pres- from President Trump. You didn't just get tweets and, you know, you know, the dog was slaying. That never happened. But he gave them that with being belligerent. Democrats think that he's like this Roman emperor now. When in reality, the Roman emperor is on the left. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. It's the Republican Party. And, and when and if, and I believe in 2022, the, the transformation will be complete, the populist transformation will be complete, where the good elements of President Trump's administration, which are plentiful, will take over the Republican Party. And, I, and hopefully, hopefully... Uh, we th- once once that takes place, and hopefully there's a little bit more diplomacy from President Trump and less of the sledgehammer. There's no stopping the Republican Party. Then you're going to have people accountable. But you need an opposition political vantage point. We don't have that now. We don't have that now because for every Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, and Devin Nunes, there's the mittens Romney that says, "No, don't listen to these uh, these petulant." Uh, populist uh, Trumplicans. Don't listen to them. Actually, we are the good Republicans. Justin Amash and, uh, and uh, Ben Sash. Tell the media what they want to hear about Trump, even though we don't believe it. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. I'll be back uh, in a couple of hours. Thank you.